DIY wall art pieces that you can make on a budget. love decorating with mirrors. They are timeless, they are classy, and they also reflect light back into the room. The shape of this mirror is so on trend right now. I have seen them all over Pinterest, all over the internet. However, if you want to buy one, you're going to have to pay for it because they can get really expensive. So I was thinking, how could I find one that's affordable? And I thought, you know what, I'm going to hit up my local thrift store. And so that's what I did. They had a huge variety of mirrors there. I rummaged through and I came across this gorgeous mirror and it only cost $15. Yes. Now the brown color, it definitely needed to be changed and I knew that, but the shape was perfect. The transformation started with a good washing. I scrubbed it and got all the dust and debris off of it and then I dried it completely. I got out some butcher paper I'm going to cover up the mirror with this butcher paper. Now there's a teeny little spot in between where the frame is and where the mirror is. And I could tuck that butcher paper right in between that space. It's a much better option to use the butcher paper because I know it's underneath every single part of that frame as opposed to say blue painter's tape because I don't know about you, but sometimes I put that stuff on and it's uneven and then I'll actually get like a line. So the butcher paper worked wonders. I did use the blue painter's tape to adhere all of the pieces of butcher paper together. Once everything was thoroughly covered and protected, it's time to paint it. I'm using this Rust-Oleum Gold Metallic Spray Paint. I love this spray paint. It is a perfect shade of gold. I use it all the time. And you can buy it at Walmart or at Lowe's or Home Depot. I began to spray the paint on the frame. I did a light coat around all the sides of the mirror. I let the first coat dry for about 30 minutes. And then I did the second coat. I repeated this process. And one way to make sure that you get a good even finish is to stand about one to two feet away from the piece and to move the paint constantly, to move that spray paint, to move it around constantly so it evenly adheres to the frame. Once it was completely saturated in the paint, I let it dry for an hour. Then I simply removed the butcher paper and the painter's tape and it revealed a brand new refreshed mirror. I hung it above my mantle right here and I love the way that it reflects so much light back into the room. It also reflects a brand new chandelier that I had hung up just a couple days ago. I love this thing. It is beautiful and the mirror reflects the light from the chandelier. And I will be telling you more about the chandelier in some upcoming videos. I am excited to show you the rest of this room refresh. We're gonna be doing some more DIYs, so make sure that you come back and stay tuned for those. Working with mirrors, especially in darker rooms or smaller confined spaces, is a great design element to add because again, it reflects, it makes it feel larger, and it also is a timeless, elegant piece that doesn't go out of style. And for $15 plus a can of spray paint, I was able to transform this mirror into something remarkable. I wanted to create a gallery wall inside of all my rectangular trim molding. My inspiration came from Restoration Hardware. I love the botanical prints that they had in this particular gallery wall, so it's going to give us our jumping off point. I needed some fairly large frames to fit the inside of these rectangles, and as you know, frames can get so expensive. So my solution was to go to Michael's and get some poster frames. At the time I went, they were buy one, get one free. And the size is a 16 by 20, which is perfect for the space. The initial color on these frames was black, and that's not really gonna fit in with my color scheme. 
But again, that's an easy fix. So I just slid off the trim pieces from around the frame and I took them outside and I sprayed them in some gold rust spray paint, the same paint that I used on my mirror frame. I sprayed the first side really well with the spray paint, made sure everything was covered in the gold, then I let it dry for one hour, I flipped the frame pieces over and sprayed the other side. Again, I made sure that everything was 100% saturated in the gold paint, and then I let it dry for two more hours. To create this artwork itself, I'm going to do it in the most affordable way possible. So to do this frame piece right here at the back matting, I'm just gonna use some poster board. I went to Target, I picked up some pieces there, they were 99 cents a piece, and I just simply cut them to the size that would fit inside my frame. To create this mat that goes around the botanical print, I just used some cardstock and my Cricut. I had my Cricut maker cut out these frame mats, and then for the actual prints themselves, I just went to Canva. They have thousands of botanical prints that you could choose from, and I printed off six that I thought coordinated well together and would add some color and would fit well in the space. I got some double-sided tape and I added it to the back of my cardstock frame mat, and then I took my botanical print and I placed it in the center. Then I got some more of that double-sided tape and I placed it on the back of my frame mat again and put it right in the center of my poster board. Now it's time to reassemble everything. I took my newly created artwork and I placed the plexiglass over the top and I put the backing underneath and then I slid the painted gold trim pieces back onto the frame. I continued this process with the remaining five pieces of art. Check out this gallery wall. It is just beautiful. And the best part is that it cost me about $30 for all six of these pieces. Talk about affordable. You could do more pictures. You could do less. You could use different size frames. If you have a large wall and you just don't know what to do with it, this is a great solution. Have you ever been at the store or online and you found something you absolutely loved and then you looked at the price tag and it just broke your heart because it was way out of your budget? Well, that's what happened to me when I saw this set of two branch wall art pieces on the Horchow website. This 3D art is cast brass in an antique gold leaf frame with crystal detail. This set of two, was $1,500 for two. So, oh, and that didn't even include shipping. It was like $165 for shipping too. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. So I am going to recreate it and it cost me only $22. To begin, I got some canvas at the Dollar Tree. They are 11 by 14 in size, and I will say that my inspiration piece was 24 inches wide by 42 inches tall, so it is quite larger than my piece that I'm gonna make, but that's okay, mine's gonna be just perfect. So with my canvas, I'm going to first trace out my branch detail. I'm gonna do it with just a regular old pencil. It's important to trace out your design first because if you don't like your design or you mess up, you can easily erase it at this point. But if you paint your canvas first and then mess up and erase, there is a possibility that you could erase some of the paint and then you'll have to start over. So doing your design first is easy because you can always paint over pencil. To create the same muted background in my inspiration piece, I'm going to start off using some Armor Metallic Paint. I purchased this at Michael's, it was $5.99 but I had a 20% off coupon, and so it brought the price down to $4.79. What I did with my paint was I first watered it down a little bit, that way this softens the color of it and it gives it a little more fluidity as you're putting it on your canvas. You can always add more paint, but it's hard to remove once it's on. So I'm adding it in small amounts and in a watered down version. I used quick brush strokes up and down 
This motion softens the edges so you can't see the brush strokes. The second layer of paint that I'm using is this metallic steel paint. I got this from Target, I already had it, I got it like a year ago. I placed the darker shade in the corners, along the edges, and at various places on the canvas where the shading was darker against the branches. The top layer is just some gold craft paint. Again, I had this, I purchased this at Michael's. I'm going to brush this gold paint on the same way with quick even strokes to minimize brush marks and soften all of the edges. This gold was the perfect top layer. It added extra dimension and sheen to my background. I think my background version is pretty spot on to the inspiration piece. I love the way that all these layers came together to add one subtle muted backdrop. Once I was finished with the paint, I let it dry completely. Now I had to do some serious brainstorming to think of a solution to create some branches. I thought if I used real branches, they would be too bulky and I would never be able to get them the same shape as the inspiration piece. So my solution is hot glue because I can mold that hot glue to the exact shape that I need. And it can be three dimensional. I began hot gluing along the traced lines. The best part about recreating these branches is the more uneven, the better. I'm not looking for straight lines. So having an unsteady, shaky hand is actually gonna work to your benefit during this project. So I just continued to hot glue along those lines. I did go back over some of the branches with extra hot glue to make them thicker and add more dimension. After I was done hot gluing my branches, I did have those little strings, so I just pulled some of those off to make sure that the canvas was really clean and that the branches didn't have any of those rogue pieces of hot glue strings all over them. Once all of my hot glue branches were created, it was time to paint them. I'm using some premium ultra bright gold paint. I got a smaller paintbrush and I painted along each one of the branches. These branches are uneven and the paint spotlights the three dimensional shape by adding highlights to the top and brightening up the edges and indentations. Once my branches were fully painted on the sides, the top, on the edges, I let it dry completely overnight. Now it's time for my favorite part and that is to add the sparkle. I got this bag of glass vase fillers on clearance for 62 cents. So hello, that was such a great score. And I picked out the clear pieces. Again, I'm using my hot glue gun. I hot glued the back of the bead before I added it to my canvas. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to minimize the strings from the hot glue and by putting it onto the bead first and then placing it onto my canvas, it minimized having all those strings all over it. So I continued to place the clear beads all over the branches until everyone was in their spot. Now that my artwork is all finished, it's time to place them in my frames. Now the frames were the biggest cost to this project. I got them at Michael's, however, I got there on a day where the frames were 70% off. So my 11 by 14 sized gold frame was originally 22 something and I ended up getting them for $6.90 a piece, which is great because these are classy frames. If I ever wanna change out the canvas, I can switch it out for something else and the frames are just timeless. So I needed to first remove the mat and the glass since this is 3D, we don't need the glass in place. So I took those out and then I put my artwork inside and placed the backing on again. And now my artwork is finished. You guys, how pretty are these? I can't believe how similar they are to my inspiration piece and we recreated it for so much less. Well, let's go over the cost breakdown really fast. I spent $2 on the canvas. I spent, we're going to round. I hope that's okay. I spent $4.79 so we'll round that to five on the paint. 
The biggest cost was the frames. We'll round that to $14. And the beads were 62 cents, so we'll round that to a dollar. For a grand total of $22, I was able to get a set of two beautiful pieces of artwork. That saves me $1,478 from our original inspiration piece. And we didn't have to pay for shipping. So we saved even more that way too. One of my favorite things about designing this artwork and creating it was I used the hot glue gun in a way that I had never used before. Hot glue is such a cheap and versatile medium to use for all kinds of designs. So if branches aren't your thing, you can use the hot glue and make some flowers or something else that fits in with your design aesthetic. I wanted something that would brighten up this space and I knew that a mirror would be a perfect solution. So I began my search. I looked online, I looked in stores, I looked on Facebook Marketplace with no success, zero. I could not find something that was this size in my style and also in my price range. So as a last ditch effort, I decided to go to my thrift store. I went and I found this mirror behind a couple of other knickknacks and other mirrors and it was perfect, the perfect size. There was minimal damage to it. And as you can see, that price was only $40. Definite score. So I scooped it up, I brought it home, and now I'm going to transform it. The first thing that I had to do was address the nicks and the scratches and the dings. Now there weren't too many on this particular mirror, but I thought it necessary to sand down those raised edges where the scrapes were and really clean it up. I washed it really thoroughly and dried it. The reason why I do that is because the paint will adhere better to the frame if it's a clean, dry surface. So next I need to protect the actual mirror itself. I ran out of butcher paper, so I needed a solution. And guess what? Plain old wrapping paper is going to do the trick. So I got everyday wrapping paper and I placed it over the top of my mirror. And then I also got some blue painters tape and I taped along the edges. Now that my mirror is prepped and ready for paint, I took it outside and I decided to use this Rust-Oleum spray paint. It is a, by the name, a metallic warm gold. I haven't used this color before. I wanted to give it a shot. I liked it because it's more of a champagne color and not a bright gold, which is going to be perfect in this dining room. So I began to spray my mirror frame in this paint. I made sure that each part of the frame was evenly covered in the spray paint. I got inside the mirror and on the outside in all of the divots and intricate design detail. Once I was finished with the first coat, I let it dry for one hour and then I came back and I did the exact same thing. I sprayed each part of the frame in the spray paint. I made sure it was even and completely coated, and then I let it dry completely, which took two hours. Now that it's dry, I can bring it back inside, and I removed that wrapping paper and blue painter's tape to reveal a brand new mirror. Simply cleaning it up and giving the frame a fresh coat of paint completely transformed it. This mirror, is pretty stunning if I do say so myself. And it looks like I spent hundreds of dollars, which you guys know I would not do. So I just spent the $40 on the mirror and the cost of spray paint. So it was so affordable. It reflects light back into the room. It reflects the beautiful chandelier and it makes the space feel so much larger. I tell you, do not sleep on your thrift store or Facebook marketplace or even garage sales. If you just keep your eyeballs open, you could find a treasure. If you're looking for a beautiful piece of wall art that needs just a little bit of love or simply a paint change, try those places out because like me, you may end up with a treasure that did not break the bank. For today's project, I have braved seven years bad luck to show you how to make this broken mirror Christmas tree. And I think it was worth it.
My inspiration for this piece came a while back when I was watching Rebecca Robeson on YouTube and she made a broken mirror Christmas tree and I absolutely loved it. First, I needed to come up with a frame. I found a two foot wide by four foot tall piece of wood at Lowe's. It was a screaming deal. It was only $6.58. I loved the swirls in the grain and I really wanted to highlight those. And so what I decided to do was to stain it in this Minwax pickled oak stain. That way it was still stained. It was a little more transparent and it would really highlight all the swirls in the grain. So I painted on the stain with a sponge brush across the entire surface of the wood. Then I removed the excess stain with a paper towel. I let the stain dry for several hours before flipping it over and I repeated the process on the other side. I painted the entire surface with this stain and then I wiped it down with a paper towel. I really love the way this almost transparent stain highlights the wood grain while still remaining a neutral backdrop so that the Christmas tree can take center stage. The next step was to add some trim to the perimeter of my board. This way it would create a frame effect. The trim that I'm using is left over from a previous project so it's not going to cost me any extra money. And the best part about this is that I get to break out my miter saw. I love getting this saw out. It makes me feel like a professional, like I'm super cool. So I got my saw out and at first I measured my trim to get the exact size that I needed for each of the four pieces of wood that would go on each side of the frame. Then I took my saw and I cut some 45 degree angles and I repeated this process until each piece of wood was cut to the correct size. I'm going to get a sponge brush and I'm going to liberally paint each piece of trim in the pickled oak stain. Then I'm gonna get a paper towel and wipe off any excess stain and then let the trim pieces dry completely. I added some liquid nails to the back of my trim and then I placed it firmly on the board and then let it dry for several hours. Even though we used some liquid nails on our trim, I'm gonna go back through with my nail gun and put a few finishing nails in through the back into the trim to secure it together. The final step was to fill in the corner edges with a little wood filler so there wouldn't be any gaps in the seams where the trim came together. All right, now that our base is completely finished and dried, it's time to move on to the fun part, and that is breaking the mirror. Now, I purchased this mirror at Walmart. It was only $6.44, and for the size, I think that that is a great deal. The next step is to take a thick contractor's garbage sack and place my mirror inside. Then I took a second bag and placed it over the top to double bag the mirror for extra safety precautions. All right, I'm gonna be using some safety goggles and then also I have some gloves with a really thick coating on it so they're not just plastic gloves. This will protect my hands just in case any rogue pieces of mirror go flying anywhere. And as you saw, I put my mirror into some industrial sized leaf kind of garden trash bags. They're really thick. So if there's any extra mirror, it will not come through these bags. And then I have a hammer. One other thing to remember is keep it on a hard, flat surface. A table will maybe bounce around a little bit, so on the ground it's going to work really well for me. So here we go. Wish me luck. Hope this is a good idea. If you're having a hard time breaking the glass with this side, flip it around to the other side and that will work really well. Once I was finished breaking my mirror, I peeked inside the bag to make sure that the pieces were the size that I wanted. When I was satisfied, I took the mirror very carefully out of those lawn bags and then I placed it right back on top of the lawn bag. Now it's time to sort my mirror pieces. 
I took the back of a hammer and I pulled up the mirror pieces and then I began to sort them out individually by size. On the back side of this particular mirror was a thick piece of paper. So each individual piece of mirror had to be peeled away from the paper, which was a little time consuming, but I think that it really prevented that mirror from splintering and shattering everywhere, kind of kept it together. So I was grateful for the paper. It didn't really bother me to pull that off. During this process, I did keep my thick gloves on and my safety goggles. I did a dry run of the placement of my mirrored pieces to create my Christmas tree shape before I permanently glued it to the wood frame. I simply laid out my various shapes on a large piece of cardboard until I got the design that I wanted. To transfer the pieces from my cardboard to the frame, I placed them right next to each other. I started at the top with the star. I continued to transfer the pieces of mirror from my poster board to my wood board until each piece was in the perfect spot to shape my Christmas tree. To the back of my mirrored pieces, I'm adding E6000. Now, I actually ended up using two full bottles of this E6000 because I really wanted those pieces to be stuck well to my board. The last thing you want are some mirrored pieces coming down on you after you have it hung up on your wall. So I wanted to make sure that they were stuck on there really well. So I added a liberal amount to the back of each of the mirrored pieces and I slowly and methodically worked my way down the tree until each piece had been glued in place. And then I let the glue dry for 24 hours. To the back of my frame, I'm adding some frame hooks that I got from an old picture frame that I wasn't using anymore. So again, this isn't gonna cost me any additional money. Once those hooks were on, I hung up my picture on the wall right above the Bombay chest in my office that way I can enjoy it all season long. I am so thrilled with the way that this turned out. I'm actually disappointed that I didn't do this project earlier, but now I have a beautiful piece of seasonal decor that I can keep and display for years to come. Several years ago, it came semi-furnished, and some of the artwork that's still up on the walls is original pieces that the original owners had. One of these pieces is this floral wall art that's been hanging in one of the guest bathrooms. I think it's just kind of okay, but I know that we can turn it into something better. My first step was deciding what kind of art I wanted to put into the frame, and I really liked the idea of the floral art, so we're gonna go in that same direction. I created these geometric round flowers. They are similar to each other, but not identical. These are actually going to be a template for me because I want to create some 3D art. How are we going to create this 3D art? You might be wondering. Well, we're just gonna use some hot glue. Yes, we're gonna use some hot glue. So what I did first was I took my template and I needed to put something over the top. I needed something that I could easily remove the hot glue from once it was dried. So I decided that I would use some backing from some transfer tape. I typically just throw this away, but I saved it the last time I used it. And if you see, as I put it over the top of my pattern, you can see through this backing and to my design below. So I put this backing right over my template and taped it in place. And then I got out my trusty mini hot glue gun. This thing has been loved. I've had it forever. I spent maybe a couple of dollars on it. It's nothing special, but it does the job. So just know that you don't need a fancy glue gun to make some 3D art. So all I did was I took my glue gun and I traced along the floral lines. Because the backing is fairly transparent, I can easily see the lines that I needed to trace over. I continued to make some lines with my glue gun to create these flowers. Once I was done with my first flower, I moved on to my second flower and I repeated the exact same process with the glue gun. I just traced along the lines and then finally, I created the third hot glue flower in the exact same way. 
as you guys know, hot glue dries lickety split. So I only had to wait a few minutes before I could peel my hot glue flowers off of the backing. It came right off. And look at how cool these three dimensional geometric flowers look. These were virtually free to create. And now I have some unique 3D flowers. I thought I would test out another method for you guys, just in case you don't have transfer backing. I just got some parchment paper and I did the same thing. I placed it over my geometric flower, taped it in place, and then I hot glued the flower, let it dry, and then peeled it off the parchment paper and it came right up. So parchment paper will work equally as well. I did not want to leave my hot glue flowers in this semi-transparent state, so I decided that I was going to paint them. And I'm using some champagne metallic paint that I purchased at Michael's. I just got this paint and a paintbrush and I began to paint each one of my hot glue flowers. I made sure that each flower was completely saturated in the champagne gold color and then I let it dry for several hours. As an alternative to painting the flowers, I know that you can get some colored hot glue. I have some and it's got some sparkles in it. It wouldn't have worked for this particular project, but I know that if you don't want to paint things, you can just buy some colored hot glue and that would work just as well. Now that our 3D flowers are complete, it's time to turn our attention back to the frame. Now I thought it was going to be just as easy as removing the flower from the mat, but as I took it out, I saw that everything was glued together, which is problematic. So we are gonna have to move on to plan B, which is to cover up the flower with something. Now that something happened to be some marble contact paper that was left over from another project. I used it to put over the top of a marble riser that I created, I think it was last year. So luckily I had this contact paper in my stash. I measured the size that I needed and then I got my rotary cutter and I cut out a rectangle. I removed the backing from the contact paper and just stuck it right over the top of the existing flower. I used my scraper tool to press it firmly to the mat. This also helps to get the air bubbles out so that it lays flat. Now we have a fresh blank slate. In order to have my 3D flowers pop, I wanted to put a darker color behind it. And so what I decided to do was get some cardstock. I got a black and gray herringbone cardstock and I just cut out some circles. To adhere my flowers to this cardstock, I'm again going to be using my hot glue gun. So I put some hot glue on the back of my hot glue flowers. Not very much, just enough that it would make it stick to my circle. So I did that and I just pressed it right in the center of the circles. I did that for all three of the flowers. Once all of my flowers were stuck to the cardstock, I got some double-sided tape, placed it on the back of each one of the cardstock circles. Then I put my three circles in the center of my mat, equidistant from each other. Once everything was in place, I simply took my floral art, placed it back into the frame, and now it is complete. I love the way that this art looks. It's so much more modern and classy and elegant. The best part is I created this artwork from items that I had around the house. I literally did not purchase one single thing to create this wall art. And I love the way it looks. I think it really has enhanced this bathroom area. I have a mirror that's just been slapped on the wall. It's frameless and you can see it in pretty much every home. So we're gonna get a new mirror, a new slash thrifted mirror. I wanted something fancy, but I didn't wanna pay a gazillion dollars for it. So I thought, let's head to the thrift store and see if we can find something there. Happy day for me, they had this beautiful mirror. I fell in love with the detail that was around the frame. The size, of course, was perfect. 
And do you know what else was fantastic? The price. It was only $24. Now, is this mirror in perfect condition? Absolutely not. There's a lot that needs to be done to it. There are some chips and some dings and some cracks. So what I did was I filled in the large divots with some wood filler and then I sanded everything down. Once that was done, I gave the mirror a good washing. I knew that I wanted to change the paint color. That was pretty evident. It was this white kind of creamish color and it looked really dirty. To prep my mirror, I got some butcher paper and painter's tape and I protected the mirror. Then I took it outside and I sprayed it in some gold rust -Oleum spray paint. I did a few coats of the spray paint. I wanted to make sure the frame was completely saturated in the paint and then I let it dry for three hours. Isn't this mirror transformation stunning? You would never know that we bought this at the thrift store for $24 and gave it a makeover. I see wall hangings like this all of the time at my local thrift store. All it is is a giant piece of wood with a picture on it. So we're gonna turn it into a blank canvas so I can hang these three pieces of coral art. The first thing I did was I took this board outside and I got some gold rust -Oleum spray paint. I painted a thorough coat. I covered up that flower really well in the paint. I sprayed along the edges and I made sure that the top surface was completely covered in the paint and then I let it dry for 30 minutes. I repeated the process with the second coat of paint. I fully saturated the sides and the top of this wall art one more time to make sure that it was 100% gold and then I let it dry overnight. If you can't find a piece of wall art like this, just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy an inexpensive piece of board there and paint it. It'll be just as affordable and it will be a great neutral backdrop for you to add whatever piece of art that you would like to the top. So I'm going to add some coral art and I got these frames which are going to be perfect in my display. The white and the gold, I got these at the Dollar Tree. To the glass, I'm going to add some coral. On my Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project, I clicked Image, and in the search bar, I typed in Coral. Several options came up. I scrolled down to this because it had three distinct coral shapes. I selected it and clicked Insert Image. I removed the excess vinyl away from the coral with my weeding tool. I just pulled it away and it came right up. Then I had my coral. I took my transfer tape next, peeled it away from the backing, placed it in the center of my vinyl coral, and then got my scraper tool and pressed the transfer tape firmly to the vinyl and then removed the backing from the vinyl. I took the glass out of the frame, then I put my vinyl coral in the center. I got my scraper tool and I pressed it firmly to the glass and then I removed the transfer tape. Are you guys ready for those free printables? Well, it's time. The backdrop that I have on these frames, I created. I wanted a white and gold and navy, kind of different colored blues that reminded me of waves. So I just made it myself. If you would like to use these printables as a backdrop in your art, I will leave a link in my description box so you can print them off and have them at home. I'm going to place the glass back into the frame then I'm going to get my first printable, lay it behind the glass, and then replace the backing. Once my first piece of coral art was finished, I moved on to the second. I added the vinyl coral to the glass. I put my second printable behind the glass and placed everything back into the frame. And then I repeated the process with the third coral. I added it to the glass, put the printable behind, and then placed the backing on the frame. And now I have three very inexpensive pieces of coral art. You could stop here if you wanted to. You could hang these up on a wall and they'd be fantastic, but I wanted to create one singular piece of art. So we're gonna pull back in this wall art that we spray painted gold. I'm going to get a screw and I'm going to put it in the center of the wall art. I got my yardstick and a ruler 
I measured the middle and then I screwed it in with my screwdriver. On the back of the frame, there's a little hook and I just hooked that right onto the screw. Then I measured my second placement for my second screw, screwed that in, added the middle piece of coral art. And finally, I moved on to the bottom piece. I measured it once again, added that screw, and then put that frame right on the screw. Now I have one singular piece of art. How gorgeous is this? Again, if you were at some kind of department store, this would be so expensive. And all we did was took an outdated piece of wall art and transformed it. And the transformation is so dramatic. Simply by recycling a thrifted piece of wall decor and adding on three Dollar Tree frames with coral vinyl inside, we got an expensive look for a very affordable price. I got this Captain's Will frame at the Dollar Tree and I immediately thought that frame will look great inside of a frame. And so that's what we're gonna do today. It's almost like a shadow box. So the first thing that I did with this Captain's Will was I decided I wanted to stain it. So I used a Minwax Walnut Shade. I got a sponge brush and I brushed that stain over the top of the circle backing first. I placed the stain on it evenly and then I got a paper towel and I wiped off the stain. I like to do that because I believe it brings out the wood grain a little bit better and it makes sure that this stain is even throughout the entire surface of the wood that you're working with. That way one part is a little bit darker than the other. It's all cohesive. So I continue to put the stain on the captain's wheel, on the handles and on the back side of everything and then I wiped it off again with that paper towel and then I let it dry for a few hours. I'm placing a compass inside of my captain's wheel. I found this compass online. It was a free printable and I will leave a link to where I got it in my description box below. So I printed it off and then I got the circular backer to the frame, placed that on top of my compass and then I got a pencil and I traced around the circle. Then I got a pair of scissors, cut out my compass. To embellish my captain's wheel a little bit further, I'm going to add some gold laying cord to each of the handles. I got this laying cord at Michael's in the jewelry section. I got a dab of hot glue and I placed that on the back of the handle, put the end of the laying cord in the hot glue, and then I began to wrap it around the handle. I did it about 10 times and then I cut it off added another dab of hot glue, and I pressed the lame cord into the glue, which secured everything together. And then I continued to do it to each one of the handles. And then I placed that compass inside of my captain's wheel and placed the backer on the back. Now that my captain's wheel is finished, I'm going to place it into a larger frame that again is from the Dollar Tree. But before I do that, I'm going to place some scrapbook paper behind as a backer. I love this scrapbook paper. It's the perfect selection for this piece that looks like water and I just love the sparkles that it has on it. It adds some extra dimension. What I did was I took the mat out of the frame. I placed it on top of my scrapbook paper. I got a pencil and I traced around it and then I cut it out. Then I got my captain's wheel. I added some hot glue to the back of the captain's wheel and pressed it firmly into the center of the scrapbook paper. Now that everything is glued together and finished, I can put it all back into the frame. I love the way that this turned out. It looks like an expensive piece from a department store. And the only money that I spent was $1 on the captain's wheel. I had everything else. So for a dollar, I am a happy camper. My gallery wall. I love the way that this turned out. My inspiration was Restoration Hardware, all of their gallery walls. I took a different spin on mine. What I did was I took a large canvas that I already had. The problem was it had a giant sunflower on it and that just wasn't gonna go with the aesthetic of my room. So I got some paint that matched the wall color and I painted over the canvas. Then I got my Dollar Tree frames that had the gold rim around it 
and I filled it with some botanical prints that I found online. They are free prints. I will leave a link in my description box if you want to go check them out. I love these botanicals. They have kind of an antique -y feel to them. So I filled my frames with these prints and then I tied some fishing line to the back of them. You might be thinking, fishing line, what? Well, I kind of wanted it to hover. So you really didn't see the mechanics behind why it was hanging the way it was. And fishing line does the job because it can hang heavier pieces and you can't see what's holding it up. So then I got some decorative nail trim and I nailed that into the top part of the frame. And then I was able to hang all of my fishing line and my frames. And the best part about this is that I'm going to be able to change out the prints for different seasons and holidays. It's gonna be an art piece that transforms over the years.